Hello, it's Gary Fox here, and uh, tonight we're going to talk about the uh, next step on our cruise control. As you remember, we started out with a model of a car, and then we added, we replaced our driver with a uh, simple control system, and it didn't really work last time. And what we're doing is we're looking at the feedback, which is the speedometer. We're looking at the speed limit, which is going to be our set point. We subtract those two and end up with an error, and then we have this controller that's going to drive the uh, command of the gas pedal. So last time we did it with uh, just proportional so that the gas pedal position was proportional to the error. And we never did really reach our goal speed. And if you think about it, it would be impossible for us to reach our goal speed. So the next step, as I was joking about in my blog, we're going to have to figure out the memory that's in our big toe. Because there is a memory. And what that math function is called is called an integral. And that sounds scary because that sounds like it's calculus. But what the integral does, to put it in simple terms, is that it looks at how long and how much. How long has it been since, you know, as we were trying to uh, build up speed and how much were we off. And from that it's able to calculate how much we need to uh, have as a memory to keep our foot on the accelerator. Because if you think about it, in the case of the proportional only, if the speed limit's 55 and our uh, feedback is 55 mile an hour, somehow we went down a hill and we got right at 55, we'd completely let off the accelerator and the car would slow down due to wind resistance. So there's no way that proportional gain can ever really get us there. So we do integral gain or integral calculation and that tells us how long it took to get us up to speed already or how much error how long it how much error we had and how long we had that error. And as it keeps adding those together it comes up with a uh, with kind of a total there, which becomes basically memory that's going to tell us what to do, how much to keep on the gas. So, we'll go to the actual spreadsheet I created this time. We'll pull that up. And there are a few additions since last time. What I added was, I added a uh, an integral gain, which right now I have it at 1, and then we have two calculations. We calculate the error and we build that integral on the error, and then we multiply it by that gain to come out with what the uh, output is. Then all those get added together to create what the total output is, and we run it through the limiter so that it's limited. So right now i got got what's going to become too much gain. And in this model I have the uh, car mass and the aerodynamic coefficient the same as they were in the previous ones. So we'll look and see how we're doing on this. And... Uh, we got a little problem here because it overshot and it kind of oscillated. It kind of wiggled around where it was supposed to be. It's supposed to be at 55. Uh, it overshot and luckily it limited, but this is what the calculation would have been if we didn't have the limit in there. In other words, we we're stomping a hole in the uh, floorboard of our car and we end up with uh, not a very pretty graph on that one. Um, and then this shows it without the other one. Wow, I done went too far. This shows it without the uh, calculation value, so it scales it up, and you can see how bad it really is. So we'll go back. Let's reduce this integral gain. We'll make it 0.1. 
was stepped down by 10. And when I did, we'll see how our graph is. And look at that, we got up to speed. It took us a pretty little, pretty long time to get up there. It took about The numbers are hard to read right here, but I think it's about uh, 60 seconds, I believe, to get up there. No, that's about 40 some seconds to get up to speed. And uh, so it's not exactly a speed ball, but hey, we made it. We got right up. We did reach 55 miles an hour. So things are looking up. I think we figured it out. So let's go again, and we'll go up to that top graph, because it'll show it even better. And uh, because I narrowed the uh, lines down. And you can actually see what it did there. And you can read the numbers, or you're a lot closer to reading the numbers here than you are on the other one. Sometimes you have to fight the software in this deal. So let's see. Let's see if we can maybe make things a little bit better. Let's increase the proportional gain. A little bit so we'll go from one to two not take quite the drastic steps we did and now uh, it takes a lot longer to get up to speed and the reason why is that it had less time to calculate uh, because the proportional gain was making things happen real fast so it had less time to think so let's go ahead and we'll increase this by point we'll double it also and as we do take a look at our graph and hey it's looking pretty good we'll go look at the one where we have things not quite so far off scale and uh, yeah look we're getting there a lot quicker this time the curve goes uh, faster getting up there and then it reaches equilibrium so, heck, if that worked, let's just try it a little bit more. So, we'll increase proportional gain to 4. We'll also double this. So we'll make this point 4. And now, let's see what we have. And we got a little bit of overshoot there. So, it really got up there in a hurry, but we have a little overshoot. We got there, we got to 55 mile an hour in about 11 seconds. We went a little bit over 55 mile an hour, up to about 60, it looks like here. But it only took 11 seconds. Of course, it might be jerking our head off. Hopefully, we got the headrest set pretty high in the car. But uh, anyhow, uh, so as you see, this, this function here, this integral function that calculates the time and the, uh, the, time and the amount of error, is uh, working. So let's go and look a little bit more at what that calculation actually is. So we look at this integral error here. What it does is that it takes this sample, the error, which is column G, takes the error of this sample and the error of the previous sample, divides that by 2, and multiplies it by the, th the uh, sampling period of 0.1. And then it adds that to the previous value of the integral because it just keeps storing. And guess what? If you think about what that is, that's exactly the same calculation we use to calculate speed from acceleration. Uh, it looks a little bit different, but it's really basically the same calculation. And uh, we don't have a gain there, and I just screwed it up. Uh, we don't have a gain with it associated with that. But we do have a gain right here that we end up multiplying our uh, our integral, or I'm sorry, our error limit by. So, as you can tell, we already used calculus, but we I just didn't call it that. And uh, basically, acceler speed is the integral of acceleration. And if you think about it, as you drive your car, you get it up to speed faster. I'm sorry, you accelerate it faster, you're going to get up to speed faster. 
and then once you stop accelerating the speeds going to stay the same so they work exactly the same and uh, that's basically what the integral function is and uh, so I go on my blog I'm talking a little bit more in detail about what the integral means but the whole goal of this was to give you an example of where calculus is used and it's used on a daily basis and you didn't even know it and so when you sit in a math class somebody draws a uh, squiggly line on the board and then they start talking about how you're going to find the error out of that line the maximum and the minimum and the uh, the uh, slope of the line and etc etc and you're like what the heck is the purpose of all this well my goal on this was to give you a purpose for it so again that's what we've done uh, we will be adding one more because this is a PI controller the next controller will be the full-blown PID P stands for proportional I stands for integral and the D will stand for derivative. Derivative is not going to buy us much, and you'll see that. As a matter of fact, derivative will kill the computer if we make it too excessive. It will kill. It will throw the car into oscillations. Not exactly the car you'd want to drive. But we'll show what derivative does. Anyhow, hopefully you got something out of this. Uh, the graph will be, I'm sorry, the spreadsheet will be downloadable. I put a link on this post to, uh, on this video to the post where I, I talk about exactly the same thing. And then there, it has a link where you can download this spreadsheet. And you can download the, uh, well, you can download this spreadsheet. So, uh, hopefully this is uh, something to tickle your interest make it feel like hey there is a reason for having to sit through those math classes and uh, if I've done all that I've met my goal on this one appreciate you listening hopefully you got something out of this this is Gary Fox